question you have. Harvest only responds to seed. Say that out loud. Harvest only responds to seed. Not prayer. Not fasting. Not, your, not titles. Seed. Now don't you go to thinking about, well, no, I don't, I don't agree with that because I remember one time I prayed, uh-uh. No, it only responds to find you some piece of money, find you something to sow. If, if it's money, you, you need whatever the harvest is you need to come up. If it's money, you're going to have to sow money. You can't talk about, I, I'm going to sow my time. You're just going to get a vacation. No money. <laughs> Until the seed is sown, the harvest is not in view. Until the seed is sown, the harvest is not. Jesus is still in the healing business. There's one, two, three. Nobody gets the faithful out of their wheelchairs these days any faster than Benny Hinn. And when Pastor Benny comes to town, no civic center is big enough. God has just healed her. Healed her of what, Pastor? Polio. This woman who said she had polio and would never walk again, she and her friends say she just climbed out of her wheelchair and walked. It's a miracle. It's, a miracle. it's unbelievable. Pastor Benny knows it's great TV, but does he know, does he care if these healings are genuine? Anybody could make up anything. Someday somebody's going to do that. And what are you going to say then? I don't know. I can't tell you now. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. Oh, yes, it has. Remember that woman supposedly cured of polio? Pastor Benny knows it made for a great episode of his TV show. He knows it probably helped squeeze even bigger donations from his flock, but there's something he doesn't know. That woman works for us. Woman doesn't have polio, never did. Then why did she say she had? We put her up there to see if he could tell her story was not true, to see if it would matter, to see if he would ever check. So, Benny, is it faith or is it fraud? I'm still a human being like you. Made many mistakes, big ones, and will still make mistakes. But I really want to do better. I really want to. I pray the power of God all over you. I pray his favor. I pray the blood of Jesus will come upon you right now. Keep you in his hair. God, I thank you for your blessings. I want you to go to the phone. Dial the number on the screen and simply say, I'm one of the 1,000. I'm going to faith in somehow in 90 days a $1,000 seed. You may already have the 1,000. That $1,000 won't get you anywhere until God touches it. It is done. In Jesus' name. It. Newspapers have flown helicopters over my house, taking pictures of my house. I didn't know how nice it was till I saw how my enemies saw it. And when I saw what they were looking, I said, wow, I am blessed. I am blessed. I didn't know how good God had been to me. Your thousand dollars cannot reproduce until it enters into a covenant with the soil. You can put that thousand dollars. Just the other day I was... I, I like new money. I don't know if you do, but I, I hate old money that's wrinkled and dirty and got all the diseases on it. I like new money. And when I give, um, when I give things to people, I like to give stacks of money. It's fun. You ever had a stack of new money? Have you? You have it? Have you? A little stack. A little, oh. <laughs> And so I, I, I made, you know, the big stack where it was brand new. And I like brand new money. I just, I don't want any money around me. It's not, I'd almost rather have a, a new one than a brand, than an old 20. Now, that's kind of dumb, isn't it? But there's something about new money that excites you. You like $100 bills? Oh, yeah. I like oh. new money, too. Oh. Most beautiful thing on earth is a $100 bill. I hadn't seen a woman as good looking as a $100 bill. There's something about a $100 bill that excites you. <laughs> So anyway, I gave it to her just, just because uh, 
I did to my sister. She took off the other day for somewhere, and so as she went to leave, and uh, I went out to her and her and her husband. I said, "Sis, I just want to give you a stack of money just to feel good, just to feel good, just stroke it." And she, he said, "We don't give to get something back." Oh yes, we do. <laughs> oh yes, we do. A man came to me and said, Brother Mike, when I give to God, I expect nothing in return. I said, I wrote a little song for you. How dumb thou art. How dumb thou art. We're talking about teenage boys. He may have met when they were as young as 14. And then, according to the allegations, may have had uh, relationships with them after they turned 16 and above. In a lawsuit, two men in their 20s now are saying the bishop, Eddie Long, took them on trips, gave them gifts, bought them a car, gave them cash, gave them jewelry, all as a ploy to have sex with them. And they say... It was the church's money that he was giving to them. His lawyer is denying the allegations, but I want you to listen to some of the most graphic details in this lawsuit, straight from the attorney who shocked many tonight when she stood before cameras and told this story of Eddie Long. Here she is. There, the pastor started to do what adult pedophiles do with younger, younger people, which is starting to spend time with them casually watch TV with him and lay his legs on him and then ask him to massage him and then start explaining to him how special he was to him and it was special for the bishop to be able to spend time with them. They did devotional readings together. He was over there on a regular basis at this house. Eventually it turned into such a relationship that the bishop had a ceremony with Anthony Flagg called a covenant. Within that covenant, it was essentially a marriage ceremony where there was a candles, exchange of jewelry, and biblical quotes given in order for Anthony to know and for the bishop to tell him, I will always have your back and you will always have mine. He would use biblical stories to talk about how important it was to follow your leader and your master and let him know that the acts that he was engaged in were not necessarily meaning that he was a homosexual or that either of them was. But rather, the pastor, Bishop Long, was releasing his passion and his love for Anthony. Meantime, we have Maurice Robinson. And while Anthony's living in this house, he's bought a Mustang car. He's given money. He is on the payroll of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church, as reflected by the federal tax returns. And he starts to travel with the bishop. He goes to the W Hotel in New York Times Square. He goes to the W Hotel in Dallas. But for Maurice, he was a little bit tougher because his mother and father were both in his life. And yet his mother recounts how the bishop, she thought there was nothing better for her son in their entire life to be handpicked as a personal um, attendant around the bishop. Not a man, you are a monster. The case was finally settled in secret back in May. Sources tell us an undisclosed amount of money was they paid didn't to the want young to talk man about anything else. We wanted to ask you about Bishop Eddie Long. Oh. Oh, no comment. Come on. Can we just talk to you for a second? Pray to the olive oil. Just plead the olive oil on me. I started. Oh, 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 oh you know all those things. Ah, it's a lie. But the congregation didn't know 